In this session, we're going to look at a few more areas in relation to stock management. So now that we know how to calculate our order quantity, we have a few other considerations. The first is, when do we place an order with our suppliers? Meaning, do we wait until the warehouse is empty and then place an order? Well, presumably not, um, because that means we'll have no stock while we wait for the new order to arrive. So we're going to want to place our order with our suppliers at some point before our warehouse is empty. But what point is that? Our second question is, how much stock do we expect to have in our warehouse? Now, when we answer the first question, when do we place an order with our supplier, this will tell us our reorder level. When we're looking at how much stock do we expect to have in our warehouse, we're going to consider two things. The maximum amount of stock we expect to hold, and we're also going to look at something called our minimum or buffer stock. Now this is a relatively straightforward section of stock management. There are a number of key formulae you need to learn to calculate each of these different things. And if you can do that, if you learn the formulae, it shouldn't present any difficulties. So let's have a look at an exercise to see how we calculate each of these things. Okay, so we've been asked to calculate the reorder level, the minimum stock level, and the maximum stock level from the following data. And we've give, been given a minimum average and maximum lead time. What does this mean? Well, the lead time is the time it takes between us placing an order and us actually receiving the goods from the supplier. If our supplier is very local, then we would expect the lead time to be low. So we would expect to receive our order perhaps within 24 hours. If our supplier is on the far side of the world, the lead time might be significantly longer. If, for example, the goods need to be shipped to us. So we need to understand then what is the approximate lead time for each of our different suppliers. The other information we've been given is about usage. So this is our demand for that piece of stock. How much do we use it per day? And then we've got our reorder quantity. So this is the number of units we order with our supplier each time we place an order. So the first thing we're going to calculate is our reorder level. When we're looking at our reorder level, we need to consider two things. So the lead time, how long is it going to take for our new goods to arrive? And how much goods will we use in the meantime? So what's our demand? What we want to ensure here is that we do not run out of stock while we're waiting for the new units to arrive. Our reorder level is calculated as the maximum lead time multiplied by the maximum demand.
If we apply this to the question, then we've been told our maximum lead time is seven days, and our maximum usage is 500 units per day. So our reorder level then is seven multiplied by 500, so 3,500 units. What we are saying here is that when the material or the stock in our warehouse gets to a level of 3,500 units, then we are going to place our new order with the supplier, and this will make sure that we will not run out of stock, even if we're waiting for the maximum lead time for the new order to arrive. So that's our first calculation. The second thing we've been asked to do is calculate the minimum, or also known as buffer stock. Now, really, the name minimum stock is a little bit misleading. What we are actually calculating here is, on average. How much stock do we expect there to be in our warehouse at the time our new order arrives? To calculate our minimum or our buffer stock, it'll be equal to our reorder level. So the number of units in the warehouse. At the time we place our new order, minus our average material usage during the lead time. Our average usage during the lead time will be our average usage, or our average demand, multiplied by the average lead time. We've calculated the reorder level in the section above, so we know that this is three thousand five hundred. If we look back up at the exercise, we can see that our average lead time is five days, and we'll just have to do a quick calculation to work out our average demand. So our average demand will just be the average of our maximum and our minimum demand. So 500 plus 300 divided by 2 gives us 400. If we just put the figures into our formula, then our minimum stock is 3,500 minus 400 multiplied by 5. If you work that through, we get 1,500 units. So this is the average amount of stock we expect to have in our warehouse at the time the new order arrives. It's called our buffer stock because this is the stock we have just in case our demand is higher than expected. Finally, then our maximum stock. Our maximum stock calculation tells us what is the maximum number of units we ever expect to have in our warehouse, and the way this is calculated is as as our reorder level minus the minimum number of units we would expect to use. During our lead time, the minimum number of units we will use during the lead time will be our minimum lead time multiplied by our minimum demand. And then we need to add on at the end our order quantity. So our stock levels are going to be at their highest at the point when 
our new order arrives. At that point, we will have the order quantity and we will also have whatever stock was left over by the end of our lead time, assuming minimum usage. So if we apply that to the question, our reorder level was 3,500 minus our minimum lead time of four days multiplied by our minimum demand of 300 plus our order quantity, which was given to us as 5,400. So our maximum stock level is 7,700 units. And that's that little section complete. Now to finish up, we're going to consider one final thing in relation to stock management, and that is the concept of free stock. Now, free stock is not stock which is given to us by our suppliers for free. Free stock is the amount of stock we have available for use on a new order. So if a customer contacts us and says they would like to place an order for 10,000 units, then we need to check our free stock to see will we be able to fulfill that order. To calculate our free stock, it's very straightforward. It's equal to our physical stock. Remember, our physical stock is the stock we have in the warehouse plus any stock we have on order. So the new stock we know is going to arrive within the next couple of days. And then we need to subtract the stock committed to existing customer orders. If we've already committed stock to a particular customer order, then it's not available for use. We can't use that stock on a new order. So, when we do that quick calculation, we get our free or available stock. 